Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Ad America. With me, Andrea, one of the EGATs here, and I hope everyone is doing well today. Today we will be having our sixth episode, which is our last episode of TOEFL IBT preparation. But before we jump into today's event, I would like to ask a little trivia question of the day. True or false, most people take the TOEFL test in order to apply to a specific school or program. If you think you know the answer, you can submit your answer to our social media platform and the first person who is able to answer the question correctly will be receiving a shout out later from us in the event. And now without further ado, I would like to pass the stage to our facilitator for today, Ms. Hafilia Ismanto, our ETS approved TOEFL IBT facilitator from International Fast Center Indonesia. So Ms. Hafilia, the stage is yours. you want to say something first yeah sure. hi ibu thank you hi. so much thank you andrea for the opening and ibu hafil i will take a little bit of your time <laughs> hi everyone thank you so much for joining us today whether you are joining in person or online uh through the zoom youtube twitter instagram facebook you know any platform that at america has you can rewatch this also in youtube if you just realize that we have this tuple ivc preparation right so I'm going to give you um, a closing or a reintroduction of Education USA if this is uh, your first time and also explaining the TNC if you are interested for the TOEFL IBT voucher that we will give away at the end of the series, okay? All right, here we go. All right, so what is Education USA? We are a U.S. Department of State network over 400 international student advising centers in 170 countries around the world. So you can say that Education USA at America is one out of that 400-something centers. And we are located in um, almost uh, every country in this world, so you can be very sure that we are legit, right? And our network promotes U.S. higher education to students around the world by offering accurate, comprehensive, and current information about your opportunity to study in the United States. And we are just one country specific. Uh, that's why it's Education USA only, right? Okay, so in Indonesia, we have six centers, total of seven advisors, including here in Education USA at America, you can see here. Um, if you know, the US Embassy have Education USA as well with Mas Iqbal, but the access is not going to be as easy as you coming into at America, because we are in the Pacific Place Mall, Jakarta, so if you haven't been here before, you're just watching us online. Even if you don't live nearby uh, Jakarta, if you drop by Jakarta, please uh, make sure you try to visit us, okay? And the second center here is at America Jakarta. Like I said, uh, there are two advisors here, Santika, me, and my colleague Christina will be in the Zoom chat box as usual. And if you have questions, you can shoot your question in the Zoom chat box or other comment box in the YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, uh, sorry, um, and just in the comment box in other platform other than the Zoom, all right? And move to Surabaya, we are in Universitas Erlangga Unair with Mbak Ember. In Malang, we are in Universitas Muhammadiyah with Zaki. And moving to Makassar, we are in Universitas Fajar with Kacendani. And last but not least, we are also located in Banda Aceh in Universitas Islam UIN Araniri with Kak Lilis. So if you know anybody who wants to, you know, get started to their plan to study in the States, but they don't know how to, all of our services are free of charge. So you can refer anybody without hesitation to the center here or to us in here in Education USA at America. Okay, move to uh, how, we, how we can help you. So these are the steps that we provide, but you don't have to follow, um, you know, the steps from the first one. So you can come to us on the third step, which a lot of people did. Um, so the first step is researching your options. It's uh, knowing what program you want, level of study that you want, and the target schools that you want to apply to. So without this, we cannot guide you further because then we don't know what you're looking for. Okay. Second one is finance your studies. So we, we talk about a lot of scholarship opportunities here. Uh, depending on your level of study, it will be different. So most of our advisees are master and PhD applicants. But of course, we are also very welcoming towards the undergraduate applicants. So um, you can come to us regardless of your level of study or your plan. And we can talk about different um, scholarship opportunities. We can talk about LPDP, we can talk about Fulbright or 
teaching or research assistantship from the university directly. Okay. And the third one is complete your application. So this is um, the university application itself to the states. Um, and in here, you will be providing a lot of the requirements that for the application, including CV or resume or essay, which is our top uh, service here. You can review your CV, resume, or essay here. Uh, we can talk about letter of recommendations, if you have questions, if you need tips, if you have difficulties you know, convincing your recommender, then we are here to give you some ideas on that. Um, what else? We can talk about other things too, but you know, like transcript, there's nothing we can do about a transcript. But if you have confusion, you can come to us to ask questions. The fourth one is applying for your student visa. This is when you got accepted to any US universities, and they will provide you with documentation so that you can start applying for your student visa here in the embassy. Okay. And we will giving you we will be giving you the step by step if you need them if you got confused um, and if there are questions that we uh, have to refer back to the university then we will tell you or encourage you to ask your university on what's the next step okay um, so yes nobody can actually replace you to apply for the student visa because you will be the one who present in the um, the interview. Okay, and it's not scary. We have a very good acceptance rate for the international student visa. It's about 95% above. So you don't have to be scared that you will get rejected or anything like that. As long as you follow all of the requirements and fill in all of the data that is required accurately. Okay. Lastly is pre-departure orientation. This is like prepare for your departure here. It's our annual event. We just had it a few months ago. Uh, we held it annually to, you know, give the orientation to people who are going to the States uh, for that year. But everyone is welcome to all of our events, right? It's open for the public. It's free. So there's no restrictions that you need to have an LOA to attend our pre-departure orientation. In fact, if you are really, really curious, like, what should I prepare if I want to go to the States, then this is actually a good event for you to attend, okay? All right, I hope this is clear enough, but I want to emphasize that all of the services are free of charge and kind of unlimited, so make use of this, okay? All right, so if you need an advising session, you can go to this link here, calendly.com slash educationusa 80 America. And if you are trying to reach to the other center, not the Education USA at America, you just need to swap this one at America in the back here to Indonesia. It will lead you to different advisors in different centers other than the at USA at America. Okay. And if you haven't found a schedule, you can come back the next day because this Calendly specific, it's open for the next 14 days. So if you cannot find any slots today, then you come back tomorrow, it will have a new day open up for you. Okay. And you can also email us at jakarta.atamerica at educationusa.org if you have any questions. All right, our upcoming events can be found on at america.org.id um, slash educationusa. Regardless of this part, you can still access at america.org.id and find your way to the Education USA event, okay? Um, our official website here, educationusa.state.gov, will contain all of the information about Education USA, the one that I have told you guys, but you can just check, okay? Uh, you can find other centers in all of all around the world and also their upcoming events and also what we do, scholarship opportunities, uh, things like that, okay? And this is our highly anticipated um, event for this month, it's the fair. So if you haven't realized that we are going to make a fair uh, this month, there are two fairs in Jakarta. Um, this one is Surabaya here, right? But we have two fairs in Jakarta, October 13th for the higher education uh, fair and we also have the graduate fair on the 22nd October so you can just go to this link I'm sorry it's cropped but yes you can go to education USA Indonesia sorry at USA Indonesia dot eventbrite.com or just google up education USA Indonesia fair and you will be directed to the top search of eventbrite okay uh, it will be in Park Hyatt Jakarta uh, hotel so you can just go there and then everything's free of charge. There's no entrance ticket. There's no fees involved, nothing. You just need to come in, bring your friends, your family, and enjoy everything that is provided there. Okay. 
All right, so I will get to the specific of these TOEFL IBD preparation series for the TOEFL IBD, um, for the TOEFL IBD voucher that we will give away. Uh, before that, could I ask our team to edit this part to make it um, highlighted in a sense? So I highlighted in the original file, but this happens, right? So um, intinya kalian bisa ngeliat TNC ini di event page di atamerica.or.id event page yang yang kalian mau daftar atau lihat detail buat TOEFL IBT preparation ini. Uh, tapi ya ini TNC-nya juga sama. Ini aku taruh lagi di sini ya. So that if you have questions, then it will be answered. Okay, I don't think we can edit it right now, so I'm just going to read it for you. Atam.tv, Adusa, TOEFL voucher. Okay, so the first point here is you are a high school or university student or a working professional who wants to pursue higher education in the United States. Higher education itu S1, S2, atau S3. Okay. You attend at least five out of six sessions in person at, at America. Jadi intinya kamu semua yang di sini yang in person, uh, hari ini hitungannya satu. Now, this is the last session. So if you attended five, then yes, uh, you take out. Kamu udah cek yang ini ya, requirement yang ini. Your ID will be required for check-in. Ini jam check-innya 12.45 sampai 1.20. Okay. Outside of this, it will not be recorded. Jadi attendance kamu gak akan dihitung. Um, you successfully submit a U.S. study plan with a brief personal essay or statement of purpose in this form. So formnya adalah atam.tv slash edusa to full voucher. Uh, Deadline-nya jam 9 malam ini. Because today is the last session, right? Um, yep, this is 8 October 2022. So sorry for this. Okay, if you're in Zoom and it's not clear, I can copy paste it to you or Kak Christina can help with that. Please note that multiple form submissions under the same name or same email will not be accepted or considered because it will be very chaotic for us to sort and we don't have that much time. Okay? Those of you who are eligible, alias uh, kalian yang dapat TOEFL IBT vouchernya itu akan dapat email dari kita, Education USA at America. Jadi emailnya akan jakarta.atamerika at educationusa.org yang ngirim ke kalian. And you guys need to check your junk mail, you know, junk box or whatever box outside of the inbox. Sometimes it just happen, right? It, it's just not in your inbox, but it's some other box in your mail. Um, there will be no certificate awarded to participants in this class. So yes, awardnya cuma TOEFL IBT voucher. For those who didn't get the TOEFL IBT voucher, then you get the knowledge and the skills from Buhafil. All right, uh, TNC ini semuanya listed di semua uh, apa, event details, jadi ada enam kan, jadi ada enam event uh, page dan semuanya itu ada TNC ini. So yes, I, I hope it's really clear, we put it everywhere and I explain it as well. And yes, um, this is all from me and if you have any questions, I heard from our beloved you guys here that there are some questions on how you guys know you will get the voucher or not. It's through the email here, we will email you. And we will email you by 15 October. So let's say if, if it's like, you know, 20 October or something, and then you haven't received any email, then most of the most of the time you don't get the voucher. Okay? All right, I hope that's clear. And I am going to call up Ibu Hafil to start the last session. Thanks, everyone. Hi, Ibu Hafil. All right. Thank you. Stage okay. is yours. Hopefully that you listen to Santika. Okay. Uh, because today is our last session and it is the listening skills. All right. Okay. If we have time, I will also do a little bit of a wrap up. Okay. Of a wrap up of what we have been talking about for the last five sessions. All right. So again, the listening skills in the TOEFL IBT, just like the reading skills, just like the uh, speaking and writing, of course, is very much related to what you are going to face when you are in college abroad, whether you're taking your bachelor's, your master's, or your doctoral degree, okay? Uh, so, because it measures the academic English skills, 
in the way that it will be used, okay, uh, then you will be hearing, you will be listening, of course, to lectures. You will also be listening to conversations that happen between yourself and your lecturers, your professors, as well as yourself with the surface staff. What we mean by the surface staff is sometimes you need to take care of your housing uh, matters, all right? Then you go to the housing office. Sometimes you have to take care of your uh, registration for certain, for certain classes, maybe. So you will also be talking to surface staff. You will also be talking among your friends, right? Okay. The listening skills consist of, again, by default, it should be three lectures followed by six questions. Two conversations followed by five questions, all right, totaling up to 28. If you get, again, just like all the other uh, skills for reading, yeah, especially if you get a piloted, a piloted, um, a piloted, not a problem, a piloted item, okay, a piloted items, then all the all the test items for lectures, for conversations will be added by one. It, does, it doesn't mean, okay, it does mean that you will have more time, but for all these items that are piloted, again, just like in the reading, it will not be counted in your score. Okay. Scale score, 0 to 30, yeah? All right. Just like the reading, of course, it's a multiple choice with one correct answer. Sometimes you are asked to choose to select two out of four, okay? Um, the order of events or steps in a process, sometimes that's what you're asked. And sometimes you're also asked to match objects or text to categories in a tab. We'll see that. Now, with all the, uh, all the sections of the TOEFL, right? Remember, all questions are obligatory. That means you must answer. No question is to be left unanswered. Note-taking is allowed. Don't forget, don't forget, once you come in to the test center, you will be presented on your desk with scrap paper, okay? And that's for you to write, for you to write on. Certain strategies will help you tackle each of the section of the listening as well as the reading. We've talked about that, okay? And of course, time management is the key. All right. When you hear academic lectures, it could be that the lecturer will just give a lecture for like five minutes, right? With no interaction in between. But sometimes you will hear there are questions coming up from the students. So in the listening, you hear a lecture giving its explanation about a certain topic, but then one student, one or two students start to ask questions, all right? So that's what we mean by it could be one way. It could be, of course, interactive. Again, just like the reading, for those of you who have been following us, Last week, I made it very clear, don't worry about the subject because whatever subjects that are related to the reading and the listening, especially when we talk about academic uh, subjects, they are considered 101. What does 101 mean? So I'm just going to okay, zoom this for you. Go ahead, look it up. This is from Wikipedia, actually, yeah? So you just look it up. Uh, there is a reason why we call it 101. Okay, the history, it's a slang. It's the sense of a number 101, which originates from its frequent use in US college courses, numbering system. And when we have psychology 101, math 101, history 101, okay? Arts 101, what does it mean? 
it indicates that that particular subject is the first or introductory course okay, for the whole term, such as Calculus 101, French 101, for example. All right? So for that reason, there is no need to worry about you not coming from the background okay, of what you have to listen to. Okay? Uh, typical topics from arts, Life science, remember life science is including biology, yeah? That's why you, you read the meerkats, okay? And sometimes you read the buffaloes, yeah? Uh, physical science and social sciences. Okay, here we go. Now, just like the reading, I'm just going to remind you of the reading, remember? Question types in the reading section consists of three big categories, right? We have the basic comprehension, the reading to learn, and making inferences. Okay, this is for the reading. For the listening, we have basic comprehension as well. The reading to learn part in the reading now is the pragmatic understanding. Okay, for the listening. And making inferences, right, it's still there, but it's under a bigger category, which is connect and synthesize. Okay, you remember what synthesize means. We have analysis, we have synthesize, which is to put things together. That's what synthesis is all about. Okay, so we're going to start with, right, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to go through, give you some examples of each of this, uh, the types of questions, all right, and the type of listening. So we're going to go one by one. First, we're going to take a look at the gist content. What do we mean, gist? Because you have gist content and you have gist purpose. So what does gist mean? It's just the main idea. It's the big picture. It's the general picture of what a text is about, of what a lecture or a conversation is talking about. And how do we get the main idea? As I said, you generalize, okay? You generalize what you hear. You generalize what you read. And your generalization is based, of course, on information we talk about this implicit as well as explicit, written as well as hidden, okay? Synthesize. Sometimes you have to synthesize. Sometimes you have to put, uh, put the, the little things, the details together and make it, so what's the big picture? What is she talking about? What's the lecture about? What are they discussing about? Because you have lectures and you have conversations for listening. So sometimes you need to synthesize to get the main idea of both information that are implicit as well as explicit. Okay. So the questions, very easy. The questions will, will be like this on the right side. What problem does, whatever the topic is, whatever the person, whatever the reading, okay, have? What are the speakers, look at the word, keywords, keywords, mainly, main, all right? So take a look, take a good look at this, meaning, what do you have to do? How do you find the answers to such questions? Look to the left, right? So you need, of course, to understand, to pick up the overall content of the lecture or the conversation. You need to eliminate choices. Remember, this is multiple choice. Multiple choice strategy is about elimination. That's, the, that's the, 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 the important tip. Eliminate from 
four, eliminate the two. I usually ask my students to eliminate two. Because if you have two left from the options, even though you're 50-50, but you have a 50 chance, a 50% probability that you are correct. Because if you don't do elimination, and you're just like uh, guessing, yeah, wild guesses, the options, you have four options. If you're taking a wild guess without eliminating, it means that you only have a 25% probability that you are correct. Okay? You got that? That's the whole idea, yeah? So make, guess if you have to, but then make a well-informed, okay, guess, and make a logic guess, and it's not just wild guesses. Eliminate choices that refer, therefore, if we're looking for the gist, we, what do we eliminate? Which option do we eliminate? We eliminate, of course, options that contain details, that contain small details, all right? Okay, try to summarize the topic of the lecture or conversation in one phrase or one sentence as you hear the uh, lecture or the conversation. Okay, we're going to do it, okay? Okay, so listen carefully. So what are you doing now? When I said, okay, listen. So, yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't get caught by surprise, yeah, remember? So when it's, it's in the test center, no one is going to re remind you, okay, now take out, <laughs> now write it down, take notes. Okay, automatically, when you click, it means that you're ready to take notes. Listen to part of a lecture in an anthropology class. Okay, I, I want to begin today by talking about calendars. I know some of you are thinking it's not all that fascinating, right? But listen, the next time you look at a calendar, I want you to keep something in mind. There are at least three natural ways of measuring the, the passage of time by day, by month, and by year. And these are all pretty easy to see, right? I mean, a day is based on one rotation of Earth. A month is how long the moon takes to move around the Earth. And a year is the time it takes for Earth to move around the sun, right? So they're all based on natural events. But the natural clocks of Earth, the moon, and the sun run on different times. And you can't divide any one of these time periods by another one without having some messy fraction left over. I mean, one lunar month, that's the time it takes for the moon to go around Earth. One month is about 29 and a half days. Not really a nice round number. And one year is a little more than 365 days. So these are obviously numbers that don't divide into each other very neatly. And this makes it pretty difficult to create some sort of tidy calendar that really works. Not that different cultures haven't tried. Have any of you ever been to Stonehenge? No? You know that amazing circle of giant stones in England? Well, if you ever go and find yourself wondering why this culture, way back in prehistoric England, would go to so much work to construct this monumental ring of enormous stones, well, keep in mind that a lot of us think it was designed, at least partially, as a calendar to mark when the seasons of the year begin, according to the exact day when the sun comes up from a particular direction. I have colleagues who insist it's a temple, maybe, or a tomb, but they can't deny that it was also used as a calendar, probably to help figure out, for example, when farmers should begin their planting each year. The Mayans in Central America also invented a calendar, but for a different purpose. The Mayans, especially the royalty and priests, wanted to look at long cycles of history. 
so the calendar they used had to be able to count far into the future as well as far into the past. And not only were the Mayans keeping track of the natural timekeepers we mentioned before, Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, but another natural timekeeper, the planet Venus. Venus rises in the sky as the morning star every 584 days, and the Venus cycle was incorporated in the Mayan calendar. So the Mayans kept track of long periods of time, and they did it so accurately, in fact, that their calendar is considered about as complicated and sophisticated as any in the world. Now, the ancient Chinese believed very strongly in astrology, the idea that you can predict future events based on the positions of the stars and planets, like, say, Jupiter. Incidentally, the whole Chinese system of astrology was based on the fact that the planet Jupiter goes around the sun once every 12 years. So one orbit of Jupiter lasts 12 of our Earth years. Apparently, that's why the Chinese calendar has a cycle of 12 years. You know, like the year of the dragon, the year of the tiger, and so on. All parts of a 12-year astrological cycle that we get from the orbit of Jupiter. Calendars based on the orbits of other planets, though, are a lot less common than those based on the cycle of the moon, the lunar month. I could mention any number of important cultures around the world that have depended on lunar calendars, but there really isn't time. So let's go right to the calendar that's now used throughout most of the world, a solar calendar based on the number of days in a year. This calendar is mainly derived from the one the ancient Romans devised a couple thousand years ago. I mean, the Romans, with more than a little help from the Greeks, realized that a year actually lasts about 365 and one quarter days. And so they decided to round off most years to 365 days, but make every fourth year into a leap year. I mean, somehow you have to account for that extra one-fourth of a day each year. So every four years, they made the calendar one day longer. By adding the leap year, the Romans were able to make a calendar that worked so well that with a few minor adjustments, this calendar is still widely used today. Okay, everyone, finally it's done. That's about a four or five minute lecture. How do you feel? Well, what's on top of your mind when you heard that? Four or five minutes. Timing, timing. That's only four or five minutes lecture. Short? Long? That's, that's how much you can speak in five minutes. Well. If you look at your notes, and I'm sure that you didn't you were not able to write all the important things, right? I'm sure that you felt, oh, I missed this. Oh, I missed that, right? Okay? But if you look at your notes, is it full? But I mean, does it take one page, half a page? <laughs> it took probably a page, yeah? Okay. So you know the many information that was able to be conveyed in five minutes. That is why in your speaking, remember your speaking? Those of you who join our sessions here and uh, online, remember speaking? How many minutes did you have to respond to a speaking task? One minute was the longest. There were some tasks that you had to respond only in 45 seconds. You see now, from the listener's point of view, you can talk a lot, right? You can talk about a lot of things. Okay. Now, what is she talking about? Okay, the calendar. <laughs> okay, now... I know she's talking about the calendar, right? So what did you hear about the calendar? What was she talking about? Come on, come on. You, you heard details. You heard a lot of details, right? And remember what you had to do? You make a general 
a big picture. What is this? Did you, what was she talking about? Come on, come on. You heard, I'm sure you heard what? Was she talking about the why, the how, the what, the who? Remember that? Okay, which one? The how, the what, the who? Was there a who in her lecture? A who? Okay, how many who's? Only one. In the lecture, did you did you hear people? Did you hear cultures? Yes. How many? Only one. Four. Okay. Look at your notes. Look at your notes. What what culture? What people? Make calendars. The Chinese. That was the last one. That's why you remember that, right? Okay. Before the Chinese. Hmm? The UK. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean the UK? The people, the people. The people in the UK? The English, all right. The English, Stonehenge, that's the product, yeah? That's the what? The who? The Chinese. Okay, the what is what calendar did the Chinese make? The lunar calendar, good, okay. The... Uh, what is that? The British? All right. The what? The Stonehenge. Okay. That's all? The Mayans. The Mayans? What was, what calendar? It was a calendar based on, apa? on the rotation of what? Venus. Planet. Okay. Three. Oh, the Romans. Okay, the Romans also made a calendar based on what was it? Solar calendar. Okay, got that? So, those are the little things, right? Those are the details. Gitu kan? Now you make a general, now you make a general understanding. So, what is this talking about? What is it talking about? The calendars, yeah, <laughs> bener. Ayo, di narrow down, narrow down, narrow down. Calendars made by different cultures, by different people. Okay? At the present or from the past. Okay. That is the gist. Okay? Listening is not just using your ears, just as reading. It's not just using your eyes. You've got to use your mind. All right? Now, so you probably, based on this, Each of you have different scribbles, okay? So, if you put it nicely, <laughs> you all have different scribbles, right? I know. But this is what we call a mind map. You have to start thinking and putting things down as a mind map. Note-taking, mind-mapping, all right? So, if this is my mind-map, okay, hold on to that. Can you see it better? Yeah, okay. So, it's something like this, yeah? Uh, there are things that, look, this is my mind-map, but then there are things that, are not connected. Do you see that? So I put down calendars, and then I heard something about passage of time. Gitu kan ya? And then she was explaining something about the days, the month, the year, and the number of days in a month, and so on, right? Okay. And then she talked about Stonehenge. 
And she, I think she was talking about the priest, the royal priest, if I'm not mistaken. So I heard something like that. Prehistoric England. And that was like a calendar to tell the farmers maybe on when there was time, okay? Time, uh, it was more on the climate changes, right? And then I heard something about the Mayans, like you. And then you said, oh, uh, they made calendar based on a planet, the rotation of Venus. And then I heard something about the ancient Chinese, just like you, okay? Based on, of course, Jupiter. Okay. I heard all this also, but I could not put it, I couldn't connect that. You get the idea? So sometimes in your notes, you do have, you do have phrases, you do have words, that seemed to be, I don't know where to put that. You lost, you're lost. It's okay. Just put it down, right? Okay. Now, this takes practice. <laughs> yeah? This is mind mapping. And believe me, mind mapping is not just, uh, and it's not just something that is beneficial for your TOEFL, but it is, beneficial as well for your college life, okay? So, based on that, if you have something like that, based on your notes, would you be able to answer this question? So, what's your answer? A, B, C, D. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Chocolate? Any other question? Uh, any other uh, opinion? Everybody, answer chocolate. C. Examples of various types of calendars used in different cultures. Okay. Napa dia ngamal? Jalan. Sorry. Yeah. Got it. Jis. Yeah, so that's how you, that is an example of a GIS content. GIS question asking the content in lectures. Okay. All right, now another example, all right. Let's practice again. Let us practice again. Note taking, using mind maps. This is a different subject. I think this is from Psychology 101. Are you ready, guys? Yeah. Okay. Listen to part of a psychology lecture. The professor is discussing behaviorism. Now, many people consider John Watson to be the founder of behaviorism. And like other behaviorists, he believed that psychologists should study only the behaviors they can observe and measure. They're not interested in mental processes. While a person could describe his thoughts, no one else can see or hear them to verify the accuracy of his report. But one thing you can observe is muscular habits. What Watson did was to observe muscular habits because he viewed them as a manifestation of thinking. One kind of habit that he studied are laryngeal habits. Watson thought laryngeal habits you know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. He thought those habits were an expression of thinking. He argued that for very young children, thinking is really talking out loud to oneself because they talk out loud even if they're not trying to communicate with someone in particular. As the individual matures, that overt talking to oneself becomes covert talking to oneself. But thinking still shows up as a laryngeal habit. One of the bits of evidence that supports this is that when people are trying to solve a problem, they um, typically have increased muscular activity in the throat region. That is, if you put electrodes on the throat and measure muscle potential, muscle activity, you discover that when people are thinking, 
like if they're diligently trying to solve a problem, that there is muscular activity in the throat region. So Watson made the argument that problem solving or thinking can be defined as a set of behaviors, a set of responses. And in this case, the response he observed was the throat activity. And that's what he means when he calls it a laryngeal habit. Now, as I am thinking about what I'm going to be saying, my muscles in my throat are responding. So thinking can be measured as muscle activity. Now, the motor theory, yes? Professor Blake, um, did he happen to look at people who sign? I mean, deaf people? Um, he did indeed. Um, and to jump ahead, but what one finds in deaf individuals who use sign language, when they're given problems of various kinds, they have muscular changes in their hands when they're trying to solve a problem. Uh, muscle changes in the hand, just like the muscular changes going on in the throat region for speaking individuals. So for Watson, thinking is identical with the activity of muscles. A related concept of thinking was developed by William James. It's called idiomotor action. Idiomotor action is an activity that occurs without our noticing it, without our being aware of it. I'll give you one simple example. If you think of locations, there tends to be eye movement that occurs with your thinking about that location. In particular, from where we're sitting, imagine that you're asked to think of our university library. Well, if you close your eyes and think of the library, and if you're sitting directly facing me, then according to this notion, your eyeballs will move slightly to the left, to, to your left, because the library is in that general direction. James and others said that this is an idea leading to a motor action, and that's why it's called idiomotor action. An idea leads to motor activity. If you wish to impress your friends and relatives, you can change this simple process into a magic trick. Ask people to do something such as I've just described. Think of something on their left. Think of something on their right. You get them to think about two things on either side with their eyes closed, and you watch their eyes very carefully. And if you do that, you'll discover that you can see rather clearly the eye movement. That is, you can see the movement of the eyeballs. Now, then you say, uh, think of either one, and I'll tell you which you're thinking of. Okay, well, Watson makes the assumption that muscular activity is equivalent to thinking. But given everything we've been talking about here, one has to ask, are there alternatives to this motor theory, this claim that muscular activities are equivalent to thinking? Is there anything else that might account for this change in muscular activity other than saying that it is thinking? And the answer is clearly yes. Is there any way to answer the question definitively? No, nah, I think the answer is no. Okay, not about calendars. What about, about what? What's the big topic? Behaviorism. Connection. Did he connect behaviorism with something? Yes, yeah, so what is the idea? What is the message that thinking? When someone is thinking, how do we know that, that someone is thinking? What happens? There is a muscular activity, right? So that's the big picture, right? Okay. So, your answer would be? Chocolate again? A theory about the relationship between muscle activity and thinking. Okay, let's see. Yay, good. Good for chocolate. Okay, so just... <laughs> All right. Okay. Got it? Okay. Now, we also have gist content in conversations. Right? So the questions, the gist content questions also appear in conversations, not only in lectures. 
when you hear conversations, it's it's a bit difficult. It's a bit difficult for you to take note because in conversations, that's a lot of dynamics going on, right? When it's a lecture, it's very structured. All the professor is saying about the what and then the how and then the where, etc. But in a conversation, it's very dynamic because then we don't know what the other person is saying. And based on what the other person is saying, the other person will also respond. Okay. So, uh, let's eavesdrop. Okay. Kita nguping, nguping. Yeah. Sekarang kalau conversation, you feel like nguping. So, this is the conversation. And it's not that long. Hey, Professor. Hi, Kim. What's up? I want to go on the summer trip. I've always wanted to study the Great Barrier Reef. I can't believe that our school is sending students out there. Sign up. I would. But, well, I don't think I can afford it. Why not? Aren't you working? Yes. But pretty much all of my paycheck goes to either books or rent. Do you know about the Good Student Scholarship? No, what's that? It's a scholarship specifically for students traveling to foreign countries. You need at least a 3.0 GPA. What's your GPA? Um, I think I have a 3.7. Well, you definitely should apply. The scholarship is easy to fill out, and they award it to about 10 students a semester. Go to the scholarship office. The applications are there. Really? I'll even write you a recommendation. I really want you to go on this trip. Thanks, Professor. I appreciate all of the information. Okay, that was a short one. So, uh, did, why did she go to the professor's office? Why did she meet the professor? What did she want to do? Go join the trip. Uh huh, but. Problem? She doesn't have any money. So, did the professor give suggestions? What? Apply for a scholarship. What will the professor also do for her? Right? Okay. Hmm? Come on, guys. I only hear one person saying C. And the others? C? It's chocolate again? Okay, so this is chocolate day. <laughs> okay, yeah. So they were talking mainly about information on funding opportunities, right? Because she wanted to join the trip. Okay, good. So. I think in conversations, it's easier for you to grasp, right? Number one, because they're using frequent, yeah, everyday language. Uh, and I sometimes said, you don't really need to write down a lot, but listen. And the attitude is your eavesdropping. So you hear, it's it's easier for you to understand the big picture as well as the detail. All right. Now, we're done with gist content, okay? We're going to move on now to gist purpose. What's the difference between, it's a gist question, but one is on content and the other one is on purpose. Okay, so... For the gist purpose, the focus is on why rather than what, right? Content is more on the what. What is the professor saying about behaviorism, about thinking? Or he is connecting thinking with muscular activities. That's the what, right? What is Remember the first professor? What is she talking about? Calendars. What about the calendars? Oh, there are many types of calendars already uh, created, made by different cultures, 
right? Some based on, uh, and most of them are, of course, based on the rotation of the planets, the moon, and the sun. Got that? Yeah? Okay. Content. What? If we talk about purpose, it's the why. Why are you here? It's a Saturday. Six Saturdays, you're here. Purpose, yeah? Okay. Right. Now, so with conversations, you will hear why people, conversations, right? People talk with each other. Uh, why does the student visit the professor also? Why does the student visit the registrar's office? That's a surface encounter. If the context is the surface, uh, the, register, the registrar's office, why did the professor ask to see the student? Maybe the student came to the professor because the professor had summoned that particular student. Why does the professor explain this and that? So, what you need to do to find the answer is look to the left, check your notes for information that identifies reason. Because it's why, then you, of course, focus on the reason that the student, why student visit professor, why professors call students, right? Note the purpose of a conversation is not always related to the conversation's topic. Yeah? Because some, what, what, what they did, the last conversation between the, the lecturer and the student who wanted to go on a trip, it was more talking on how she could apply. You got that? That was like, it became the topic of the conversation. Oh, really? There is a scholarship? Yes, you do this, you do that with the GPA of three. I can give you a letter of recommendation. Go to the whatever office. You got that? Those are the details. But the main idea was not how to apply. You get it? The main idea was she came because she wanted to know if there were opportunities that she could get funding. Got it? Yeah? Jangan terkecoh. Jangan terkecoh. Kadang-kadang, in the option, itu sengaja ditaro. Plak. For you to get distracted. So, note that the purpose of a conversation or the main idea is not always related to the conversation's topic. Okay, and you should find the problem and the solution. Right. So, you already talk about this, right? I'm not going to re repeat this. I don't think that you need to. In your TOEFL, in the real test, you will not be able to replay. That means you've got to be, you've got to get the most out of the first and the only listening. Okay. Why does the student go to the professor? Young man. Is it chocolate again? To discuss an upcoming trip. That was the purpose, kan? Okay? To ask for recommendation. No. She doesn't even know that the professor can give her a recommendation, right? <laughs> to talk about her class grade. Huh? Nah, this is what we call about, this is what I said, Elimination. You have four. In the first second, eliminate, eliminate the option that is like, huh? Are you joking? Kidding? Impossible. Yeah? So you will probably eliminate B. That was the first thing that you eliminate. Nothing about grade. Huh? What about talk about an application form? Oh, ya, tadi ada application, application. Ya, ada. Nah, if your listening skill is just copying what you hear, ada application form, di sini ada application form juga. You get the idea? Ya, itu kali. 
Ya. This is a distractor. This is a common distractor that test writers put. Why? Why? Be, I'm not saying that it's always wrong. Hati-hati loh. Okay. I'm not saying that it's always wrong. It's mostly to distract you. If your listening skill, just like your reading, if you only understand English, there is application form heard, application form read, without understanding the context, and there is application form in the option, oh, that must be it, you are simply copy-pasting. It means, it just shows us, ya ini kan assessment kan? There is no pass or failing the TOEFL ya. Gak ada loh. IELTS juga gak ada. Yang pass sama fail itu siapa ya? Universitinya yang menentukan what level you need. The TOEFL is not a pass or fail. It is just a measurement. Universities have the prerogative to decide what score is good enough for their uh, for their majors for their students, depending on the majors that you take. With law, anyone taking law here? Okay, Stanford. Harvard will ask for a hundred TOEFL. Okay, got it? Yeah, because it's law. With medicine, John Hopkins, they're going to ask for a hundred. Depending, why? Because it's tough language. Right? You've got to know the basic already. You've got to be advanced already to be able to then read all these medical journals, read all the, uh, what is that, the, the laws, okay, and be able to write, yeah, about the topic, okay. So, ini, be very careful. This is what we mean by do not get distracted with the same words that are put in the option, all right? Justru, this is the study case. Berarti kalau you answer A, they know. Oh ya, berarti memang dia belum sampai, okay, to the level of like, tadi kan 0 to 30, kan? Okay, mungkin masih di 15, mungkin masih di 10, ya, yeah, I don't know, because that's a, this is out of how many questions, ya? Yeah? All right, so that's another chocolate, yeah? Great, okay. Hmm. This is another conversation, and this one is a longer one. Do you know where it is? It's the library. Which is which? Who is which one? Who's who? The student is the one with the backpack, of course, yeah. And we have who? What do we call the person there? The librarian. Now, the question is why? Gitu kan? Purpose. Why, uh, why does the student go to see the librarian? Okay? Listen to part of a conversation in a library. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for a reference book. Okay. Do you know the title? Well, that's the thing. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for. I need uh, information on European demographics. Okay. Do you just need population statistics, like total population, male, female, real basics for demographics? Yeah. Population, literacy rate, uh, let's see, life expectancy by gender, like if women tend to live longer than men, things like that. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure you get most, if not all, of those statistics from an atlas. I can tell you where to find one in the reference section. Yeah, but I'm kind of looking for it by city, not by country in the atlas I saw. 
Uh-huh. Let me see. Well, do you know if there are any other reference books I, I can use for this to find the statistics by city? City, you say. Any particular part of Europe? Eastern, Western, Southern? No, pretty much all across Europe. All of Europe. Hmm. You know, maybe you could tell me what this is for. I mean, maybe if, if I know, I can help you better. Yeah, okay. Geography with Professor Miller, and it's sort of an analysis of uh, urban areas, a comparison of population trends and uh, economic indicators, social indicators, I guess. Okay, well, there's something called the Demographic Yearbook, but it's but I don't think it's going to do it by city. Yeah, I think that's just by country. You've already looked at it? I think, I think you're right, but I'm just going to check it first, because it would be easy if it were there. Yeah, population, by country. Okay, let's see. Did you, I mean, did your professor give you any ideas on where to look? I mean, because if you need the demographic information by city... No, she, she didn't. She just gave us the assignment, and I figured I could find what I needed here without too much of a problem. Yeah, it should be easier than this. I mean, I know there's one for North American cities, but I don't think that'll be a big help. Nah. Tell you what, let's go over to the reference section. Let's take a look around that area and see if anything looks promising. Okay. Is it chocolate again? Are you sure? Now, the conversation is longer, yeah? Right? So, uh, just purpose. Why does the student go to see the librarian? To ask a book on population statistics? to ask about a book on a distinct population, to find a reference book for his professor, to ask for a recommendation on the reference. Which one? Come on, come on. Ni mirip mirip ni, ya, mirip mirip. Delta. Okay. Why not C? Why not C? Why is it not C? It, he, he wants to find a reference book for whom? For himself, law. Kalau di situ, for his professor, that means the reference book he's looking for is for his professor. Got that? Yeah, be very careful. That's a small, tiny thing. Okay. To ask about a book, on a distinct population? Ini masih gist ya, masih gist. Why? That will be detail ya. That's too detailed. He didn't talk about a distinct population. To ask about a book on population statistics? Not only, right? So, the answer this time is not chocolate, but it is... Mm -mm. Apa delta? <laughs> All right. Okay. We listen to this. Right. You wrote, you have written notes. Yeah. Because I'm going to go back to some of these lectures again using different questions. So we've we have uh, taken care of the gist content. We've taken care of the gist purpose. And now we go to the details, right? Explicit details or facts are asked okay, for this question type from a lecture or a conversation. So this is the type of questions that you will find on the right side. yeah. And that's what you need to do to refer to your notes, of course, on major details from the conversation or lecture. Do not choose, again, an answer only because it contains some of the words. Remember, jebakan, jebakan, trap, trap. Yep. Okay. Uh, decide which one of the choices is most consistent 
with the main idea of the lecture. Remember tadi main idea-nya to find a book, a reference book. Itu kan ya? Oke. Okay. I'm going back again. Remember? This is the sign language. That means you've heard two lectures so far, right? One about behaviorism, psychology 101, and one about calendars, right? Now, if, we, uh, if the question is, what does the professor say about people who use sign language? About the psychology, right? Okay, so you remember? Which one? Is it chocolate again? The muscles in their hands move when they solve the problem. Just for those of you who did not get it, yeah, uh, look at your notes. Look at your notes. All right? That was the type, remember in the lecture, he was, he was explaining, and then there was a student asking, right? Because he was talking about, uh, yeah, he was talking about the laryngeal habit. And so one student asked, what about if people do not speak? That means they use sign language. How do you know? Okay, so what kind of activity? Because they're not talking, they're not speaking. Speaking, they're not using the laryngeal uh, part of their body. And so he said, he said, they usually move their hand. Okay, that's a detail. Now, this is another conversation. Okay, this is another conversation that you hear. Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Uh, excuse me, Professor Thompson. Uh, I know your office hours are tomorrow, but I was wondering if you had a few minutes free now to discuss something. Sure, John. What did you want to talk about? Well, I have some quick questions about how to write up the research project I did this semester about climate variations. Oh, yes. You were looking at variations in climate in the Grant City area, right? How far along have you gotten? I've got all my data, so I'm starting to summarize it now, preparing graphs and stuff. But I'm just, I'm looking at it, and I'm afraid that it's not enough. But I'm not sure what else to put in the report. I hear the same thing from every student. You know, you have to remember now that you're the expert on what you've done. So think about what you'd need to include if you were going to explain your research project to someone with general or casual knowledge about the subject, like, like your parents. That's usually my rule of thumb. Would my parents understand this? Okay, I get it. I hope you can recognize by my saying that how much you do know about the subject. Right, I understand. I was wondering if I should also include the notes from the research journal you suggested I keep. Yes, definitely. You should use them to indicate what your evolution and thought was through time. So just set up, you know, what was the purpose of what you were doing to try to understand the climate variability of this area and what you did and what your approach was. Okay. So, for example, I studied meteorological records. I looked at climate charts. I used different methods for analyzing the data, like certain statistical tests, and then I discussed the results. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's right. You should include all of that. The statistical tests are especially important. And also, be sure you include a good reference section where all your published and unpublished data came from, because you have a lot of unpublished climate data. Hmm. Something just came into my mind and went out the other side. Well, that happens to me a lot, so I've come up with a pretty good memory management tool. I carry a little pad with me all the time and jot down questions or ideas that I don't want to forget. For example, I went to the doctor with my daughter and her baby son last week, and we knew we wouldn't remember everything we wanted to ask the doctor, so we actually made a list of five things we wanted answers to. Notepad is a good idea. Since I'm so busy now at the end of the semester, I'm getting pretty forgetful these days. Okay, I just remembered what I was trying to say before. Good. I was hoping you'd come up with it. Yes, it ends up that I have data on more than just the immediate Grant City area, so I also included some regional data in the report. With everything else, it should be a pretty good indicator of the climate in this part of the state. Sounds good. 
I'd be happy to look over a draft version before you hand in the final copy, if you wish. Great. I'll plan to get you a draft of the paper by next Friday. Thanks very much. Well, see ya. Okay. What does the professor offer to do for the men? This is details. This is details. Help him collect more data. Submit his research findings for publication. Itu udah impossible ya. Elimination number one. Number two. Because, and especially number two. There's nothing talking about publication, right? She did say publications, but there are, there are many resources from the publication, so the men should write down the blah, blah, blah. Okay. Give him the doctor's telephone number. But did they talk about was there a was there a, was there a, you know like talking about the doctor? But does it have something to do with his research? So I think the professor was just giving an example, right, to write down important points. Okay, so it's D. Did she exactly say that she is going to help review the first version? The first version? Or did she use a different word? Okay. Yeah. Remember, synonym, paraphrasing. That is one of the easiest test items. In the TOEFL. As I said, there will not be copy paste, copy paste. They will, and this is the easiest, one of the easiest, because it's explicit, it's there, you don't need to think, right? She said it, yeah, but she did not say first version, she said draft. Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. La, 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 la. Uh, excuse me, professor. Sorry, sorry. Me a little pad with. A notepad is a good idea. Just the immediate Grant City area, so I also included some regional data in the report. With everything else, it should be a pretty good indicator of the climate in this part of the state. Sounds good. I'd be happy to look over a draft version before you hand in the final copy, if you wish. Great. Did you see that? I'd be happy to look over. And she said, look over. Another synonym. Paraphrase. Look over is the same as? Review. Draft version. The same as first version. Okay? Yeah. Listen to... Those are the details. Now we have taken a look at gist, content purpose, and details, meaning these are all the basic comprehension questions. These are all com uh, questions, okay, that you... That if you're able to answer, tells the the test makers, okay, that, oh, so you understand. Basically, and very basic, you understand what's being discussed by the professor and what is being uh, discussed by two different people, okay? Now we go to pragmatic understanding, which involves understanding the purpose of what is said, a particular word or phrases. That's the difference, all right? Between this purpose and understanding the purpose of what is said. Now, look at here. If a person says, so that's a conversation, very short, okay? Just two lines. The black, right? The black uh, printed Sentences is a someone, a student, who says, okay, I'll pay with a credit card. Where do I do that at? And then, this is, maybe he's at, at, uh, at a surface counter, and the officer that said, um, the housing office, okay? Housing office, all right. 
So the student is just repeating. Okay, I'll sing off. And the question that the, <clears throat> the, 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 the officer asked was that, so you, so you know where it is? What is the purpose of that question? Or if I rephrase that into, do you know where it is? Why is she asking that? Do you know where it is? Is she asking because she wants direction? You know? Or is she asking to check whether the student already know where the housing office is? The first one or the second one? Second one, yeah. Okay. The, the statement is the same. If you don't know where at America is, you go downstairs, right? You come in, and then you ask the uh, information there on the ground floor. You have the information, right? Then you go, excuse me, where is at America? Which floor? You got that? You are asking because you want to know, because you want to go there. You're asking for direction, yeah? Right? But if you tell a friend, hey, uh, let's, meet, uh, let's meet up Saturday. Let's have coffee. I'll be at Ad America. Okay. You want to join? Oh, yeah, sure. And then you ask, do you know where it is? You get the difference? Yeah. The reason... That you ask your friend, do you know where it is? Because you want to chat. So you're going to meet me, right? At Ad America, right? Do you know where it is? You're checking. Okay? But if you go, if you go to the information center and ask, do you know where Ad America is? Excuse me, hello, hello. Then you ask because you want information. You see the difference? Nah. So that's what I'm saying. Questions may be the same. Words are the same. But the meaning is different. How do we know which we mean? Are we checking or are we asking? Because we don't know. Context. Then you have to understand the context. Got it? Okay. So... Usually, usually in your TOEFL, there will be a question that asks something like this. What is the woman trying to find out from the man? What does the professor imply when he says this? Making inferences, yeah? What does the professor mean when he says this? And usually, you will not be able to hear the whole lecture or the whole conversation again, but you will hear just an excerpt, a portion of that particular uh, part. Okay? Now. So for this one, even though you didn't hear it, what is the woman trying to find out from the men? Is she trying... To find out where the housing office is, how far the housing office is, whether she needs to tell him where the housing office is, or whether he has been to the, the housing office. Another chocolate. Yeah? Okay. Now, Naini. Remember? Psychology 101? Okay. Now, Nanti, there will be just, you, you just will be given a short excerpt because the question is, listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Why does the professor say, say apa? Say ini lo. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Watson thought laryngeal habits 
you know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. He thought those habits were an expression of thinking. Why does the professor say this? You know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. Why did the professor say that? You know, larynx, related to the voice box. Why? Come on, come on, come on. You're you're asking you're you're answering with a question mark. He? <laughs> you're answering me with a question mark. B? I don't know. It's like you're not saying B. B. You're saying B. Mm, B. Okay. B. To give an example of a laryngeal habit. To explain the meaning of a term? Come on, come on, come on. Nee, 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 nee. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Watson thought laryngeal habits, you know, from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box, he thought those habits were an expression of thinking. Why does the professor say this? You know, you... from larynx, in, in other words, related to the voice box. So, are you, are you now confident? He repeated that, right? And then he gave more, gitu kan? Dia kasih more information. Maksudnya, what, is in, what does he mean to... Listen again to part of the lecture. So, yeah. Then answer the question. Okay. Watson thought laryngeal habits. All right, yeah. So the answer is bravo. Okay. Okay. Now this is the same, actually. Okay, but this is uh, I took this from. So this is a different format. Why? Uh, because I took this from if you if you get the the source the official guide for the TOEFL the practice test the digital book all right this is how it's formatted uh, the practice test meaning you can time the timer will be there right so you can practice using the original timing okay. Yeah, so what's the question? Why does the woman say, say what? Why does the woman say this? Um, but first of all, though, how many pages do we have left? I told my roommate I'd meet her at the library at 7 o'clock. Even though you did not hear the whole conversation yet, but you can think. Come on, come on. Use your logic, use your common sense. Listen again. This is a very short part of a conversation. I know you did not listen to the whole conversation, but use your logic. Use your logic. Itu lo. Okay. Mikir, mikir. Why does the woman say this? Um, but first of all, though, how many pages do we have left? I told my roommate I'd meet her at the library at 7 o'clock. How many pages do we have left? I told my roommate I'd meet her at the library at 7 o'clock. Itu making inference. Coba kalian tersirat apa? This is making inference. Tersirat apa? To find out if the man has done his assignment. No. B. To ask the man to find out if the library is open. No. C. To let the man know that she cannot study much longer. Yeah. Because she said I prom. How many pages? Do, do we still have to work on? Gitu kan? Atau kita harus berdiskusi. Why? I promised my friend that I'd meet her at the library at 7. Gitu kan? Berarti, uh, I, ha I don't have much time left. Gitu kan? Is it to ask if the man has ever met her roommate? Ya udah, itu kalau kamu cuma dengar roommate, terus, oh ya ada roommate-nya. Klik. Itu loh. 
ya. Oke. Okay. So, chocolate day. Yeah, I should have brought chocolate. Sorry about that. I forgot about that. Didn't realize that. Oke. Okay. So, there ya. Jelas? Ya. Yeah. And now we go to understanding the speaker's attitude. Remember, this is speaking ya. Yeah? Speaking. Meaning, you're listening, but you're not listening to robots. You're listening to people giving a lecture. And I'm sure your lecturers, when they lecture you, they don't sound like robots, right? They don't go like, okay, now, I need to, you need to develop your skills, competence in the following areas. Basic comprehension consists of, I'm sure your lectures do not do that, right? They will use intonation. They will use pauses. They will use repetition. Why? To express. Okay, to express what information is important, what information is not. Right? So, and what, it's not just what they say, it's how they Listen. say it. All right? Now, pay attention to the speaker's tone of voice. You need tone. Somebody could sound apologetic. Somebody could sound confused, enthusiastic, or maybe doubtful, or maybe happy, or maybe very sorry, right? How do you know? So with speaking, it is not just the words that you say. It is how you say it. It's too pragmatic understanding, all right? Dan ini a lot of inferences tersirat. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Okay, now, let's practice what I mean. Right? If I tell you that the gov, okay, now, say oh. I want you to say oh, all right? Yeah. Nah, kan? You're like robots, right? Oh. Now, you say oh to respond to me when I say, Hey, guys, the government, I just read it in the thick news. Gitu. What? The government said that we're going to have a one-week holiday next week. So, how do you respond to me? How is your oh? Okay. So, sound enthusiast. Are you happy or not? Yes, yeah, so sound happy. Go ahead. Say oh. That's a kind of funny happy, see? Oh. <laughs> I think it was the first one you said. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Now, what if, all right, I told you, okay, what if I told you, sorry, but this morning, this morning, your little brother, Or your little son, okay, pour ink on your paper. How's the O? Are you happy? No. Okay. Right? The same O, but different what? Intonation. Because you have a different expression okay different feeling about it now that's why we need to listen to intonation what is implied okay guys before we listen let's just have some practice if you want look at the yeah this is just the same group Basically, it's the same thing. But if you want to stress, all right, I know how to make pizza, not someone else. That's what you want to mean. That's what, that's what you mean. That's what you mean. That's what you're trying to say. That's the message you're trying to convey. But you're using one sentence, which is, I know how to make pizza. That's one sentence. But if you mean A, I know how to make pizza, not someone else. So how would you say that I know how to make pizza? Go ahead. 
What's your stress? Where, where? The eye at the pizza or the make or the what? I. I know how to make pizza. You get that? Because you want to tell the world, I know. You understand, yeah? Okay. Number two, B. I am sure I know. So the stress is, I you're saying the same thing. I know how to make pizza. Okay. C. I know how to make pizza. Right? Okay. D. I can actually make it. So, you're trying to convince your friend. I can, I can, I can. So, I know how to make pizza. Why are we buying pizza? I know how to make pizza. You got the idea? Yeah? Okay. Pizza. If, okay. Uh, if your friend said, okay, let's have a party. What do you want to bring? And then you say, uh, can you bring the spaghetti? And you said, no, no, no. Why not? Because pizza. I know how to make pizza, not other things. You got that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Masih ingat ini? Still remember? Yeah. Who sounds how? What do you think? Maybe you didn't pay attention to it, yeah? But then, the students sound apologetic, confused, enthusiastic, or doubtful? Confused. Okay. And how did the librarian feel? How did the librarian feel? The student wanted something, right? Did the librarian help him or not? She did? She knows exactly where to find it? So, apologetic? Okay, 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 okay. That's why when you listen, do not just listen to words, but also listen to intonation. What is between the lines? I'm going to. Can you hear this? But then, I'll do it one more time. But then focus on the intonation, all right? How do they sound? Listen to part of a conversation in a library. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for a reference book. Okay, do you know the title? Well, that's the thing. I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking for. I need uh, information on European demographics. Okay. Do you just need population statistics, like total population, male, female, real basics for demographics? Yeah. Population, literacy rate, uh, let's see, life expectancy by gender, like if women tend to live longer than men, things like that. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure you get most, if not all, of those statistics from an atlas. I can tell you where to find one in the reference section. Yeah, but I'm kind of looking for it by city, not by country in the atlas I saw. Uh-huh. I see. Well, do you know if there are any other reference books I, I can use for this to find the statistics by city? City, you say. Any particular part of Europe? Eastern, Western, Southern? No, pretty much all across Europe. All of Europe. Hmm. You know, maybe you could tell... Okay, I'm just going to stop there. Look at the words. Look at the um, the pauses. Um, uh, hmm? You see that? From the, from the librarian's part. What do you think? How did she sound? Was she confident? No. 
So what what was the best what's the best uh, adjective for the librarian? Doubtful. Yeah. And because the librarian, the person who's supposed to help, is doubtful, you can imagine how the student feels. You got that? <laughs> then from I think from confused, he's going to go, he's going to get oh, okay. He's going to be frustrated, maybe. All right, yeah. Okay. So he's going to say thank you in a different way. Thank you. You got that? You usually do that, yeah. Thank you, but you don't mean thank you. Yaudah, thanks. Okay. This is pragmatic. Okay? Understanding speaker's attitude. Okay. Psychology class again. 101. All right. Uh, this part, this part. What is the professor's opinion about the motor theory of thinking? Okay, well, Watson makes the assumption that muscular activity is equivalent to thinking. But given everything we've been talking about here, one has to ask, are there alternatives to this motor theory, this claim that muscular activities are equivalent to thinking? Is there anything else that might account for this change in muscular activity other than saying that it is thinking? And the answer is clearly yes. Is there any way to answer the question definitively? No, nah, I think the answer is no. What is the professor's opinion of the motor theory of thinking? Is it most of the evidence he has collected contradicts it. It explains adult behavior better than it explains child behavior. No. Is it, it is the most valid theory of thinking at the present time. Jadi? It cannot be completely proof or disapprove. Listen again, listen again. Carefully listen to the words. Any words nya juga ya, not just the intonation. Words. Carefully listen to the words. Okay. Well, Watson makes the assumption that muscular activity is equivalent to thinking. But given everything we've been talking about here, one has to ask: Are there alternatives to this motor theory? This claim that muscular activities are equivalent to thinking. Is there anything else that might account for this change in muscular activity? other than saying that it is thinking? And the answer is clearly yes. Is there any way to answer the question definitively? No, nah, I think the answer is no. That's the key. Is there any way to answer the question definitively? That's the key. And he said no. How did we get that answer? Okay. This is what he said. Yeah? In case you didn't hear it. <laughs> and look at the last question. Uh, sorry. Look at the last uh, sentence. Uh, two sentences. Answer the qu Okay. The question is that, is there anything else that might account for this change in muscular activity? Can? Watson was saying muscular activity itu kenapa kita begana begini it's because our hands are like this it's because we are thinking you got that so some muscular activities is related to our thinking and then but given everything we've been talking about here one has to ask are there alternatives to this motor theory meaning we do, there are motoric things that we do, but it's not based on thinking. Got it? That's the second sentence. This claim that muscular activities are equivalent to thinking. Are there any uh, alternatives that 
muscular activity is not always related to thinking. Itu kan yang sedang dipertanyakan. Is there anything else that might account for this change in muscular activity other than saying that it is thinking? Ada nggak penyebab lain dari muscular activity other than thinking? Itu loh, got it? Nah ya, and then, and the answer is yes. What is yes? There is that there is something else, right? The answer is yes. There might be something else that makes that muscular activity not only thinking. But look at the second one. Is there any way to answer the question definitively? What does definitively mean? Decisively and with authority. Meaning, that's a 100%. Decision, yes. And authority means I have the proof, I have the evidence. You get the idea? Look at what he said. The answer is no. So what is his attitude? Is it yes or no or in the middle? In the middle. When you're in the middle, which one? A, B, C or D? It cannot be completely proved or disapproved. Okay? Got that? Yeah. This is one of the tricky questions. Yeah? This is quite tricky and it requires a lot of advanced understanding of the words that they're using. Okay? Okay, right, and now we're Listen going to, to talk about understanding organizations. Remember, remember this, those of you who join us, uh, we were talking about this for reading. Yeah, last week, whatever, whatever the text is, exposition, argumentation, historical, The type of how it is organized could take forms, the same forms, classifications, comparison, cause effect, problem solution, and a lot of other things. That's the whole English for academic purposes, writing and reading. Now anyway, remember the classifications, okay, the same. In listening, you also have to get, you also have to extract how the points made in the lecture are classified, are organized. So one of the questions that is a representative of understanding organizations is asking, what point does the professor make when he refers to the university Library. Okay. You remember he said about people who cannot about the the motoric activity. Close your eyes. That's what he said. Close your eyes. If you close your eyes, okay, and then you think of, for example. Close your eyes and you think of uh, the, you think of the, not elevator, what do you call that? Escalator. Now, you're here, right? Okay. Close your eyes and you think of the escalator. You know that escalator that takes you from the first floor and then go straight Or the second floor, I think, that goes straight. You know, the, the long, right, escalator. So what he's saying is that 
if you're thinking about where it is, your eyes, and if you close your eyes, I would be able, because I know where it is, you know where it is, I would be able to see that you, your, what is that? Your eyeballs are moving. Which direction do you think? That way? This way? To the left or to the right? When we're talking about that escalator that took us here. Uh, very uh, long escalator, you know? Your, your eyes would probably move to the left, right? What point does the professor make when he refers to that? What is he trying to do? What is he trying to do here? Why did he explain about that in the lecture? Is it C again? Is it a study on problem solving? Is it students should go <coughs> to the library? <coughs> Has nothing to do with that, yeah? Okay. Is it C again? It's not about he learned about William James' concept of thinking. No, 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 no. So, yeah. Okay. Organization, uh, understanding organizations mean that is like he explained it, details, he gave an example. So he was talking about a theory, and then the theory was backed up by an example. You got that? Okay, yeah? Cause and effect. All right? Okay. Listen. When we try to connect the content, questions like this come up. What is the likely outcome of doing procedure A, for example? What can be inferred? There's a lot of making inferences, questions. What does the professor imply? All right. Okay. Now. Again, remember the magic trick? So, why did he give... Uh, the professor describes a magic trick to the class. What does the magic trick demonstrate? A, B, C, or D? An action people make that they are not aware of. The magic trick is, remember... Ask someone to close their eyes, yeah, and think of a place. Gitu kan? If you want to play with your friend, think of a place. I will know what you're thinking of by the movement of your eyeballs. All right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And of course, I don't need to explain about making inferences because I think. <laughs> I think making inferences has been. Uh, discuss a lot, all right, before I open the question and answer session, okay, if there aren't any question and answer, then I'll give you a few, uh, I'll, I'll add a few things, but then I do want to show you this. Listen. Okay. Make sure, make sure, if you have not already found this, Make sure that you, you go again to your ETS.org, right? And if we go to ETS.org, yeah? Okay. Uh, let me just go straight and take you there. Okay. So if you go to your ETS.org, right? Wait, 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 wait. I hope this is working. Okay. Remember the new landing page? Yeah. Okay. And then remember, of course, you will want to know, you will want to go here, right? 
I'm a test taker and I would like to practice, right? Uh, take a practice test. And of course, you are going to choose the TOEFL IBT. Practice now. And what you can see here is, remember last time we went to accessible format, which took you to the PDFs. Yeah. This time, go to the practice test. If you go to the practice test, it will take you to this part. This is the resources, the paid resources, of course. But you have this one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This one. Can you see this one? TOEFL IBT free practice test. Free, free. Yeah. Now, what do you need to do? Launch it. You got that? If you launch it, you can practice on how the IBT, uh, on the structure, timing, and so on, when it is done online. Here we go. You see that? And all you need to do is, it will take you to, of course, the reading section. Yeah? And then, you continue. Then that's the reading. Blah, 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 blah. Can you see the reading there? Yeah. Nah, tentunya nanti setelah reading, ya silakan aja, you do it, gitu loh. Right? And when you answer, you can, of course, review. Ya? Yeah? You review your answer, ya. Yeah. Uh, Oke, okay. coba deh sekarang, yuk. I'm going, I open already, I think, Nah, this is the listening part, yeah? So if you have done the reading, you can go to the listening part. So I'm just going to try this out with you just to show you before I open the question and answer. So, ini kan bagian listening. Continue. Listening section directions. The listening section of the TOEFL IBT test measures your ability to understand conversations and lectures in English. In an actual test, the listening section is divided into two or three separately timed parts. In each part, you will listen to one conversation and one or two lectures. You will hear each conversation and lecture only one time. After each conversation or lecture, you will answer some questions about it. Answer the questions based on what is stated or implied by the speakers. In an actual test, a clock that is provided shows you how much time remains. The clock does not count down while you are listening. The clock counts down only while you are answering questions. For this practice test, a useful guideline is to spend no more than 35 seconds to answer a question. You may take notes while you listen. You may use your notes to help you answer the questions. Your notes will not be scored. In some questions, you will see this icon. This means that you will hear, but not see, part of the question. Some of the questions have special directions. These directions will appear in a gray box on the screen. Most questions are worth one point. If a question is worth more than one point, it will have special directions that indicate how many points you can receive. You must answer each question. After you answer, select Next. Then select OK to confirm your answer and go on to the next question. After you select OK, you cannot return to the previous questions. You can select Review at any time, and the review screen will show you which questions you have answered correctly or incorrectly, and which you have not answered. From this review screen, you can go directly to any question you have already seen in the listening section. Select Continue to go on. Okay, remember that this is like a practice, yeah? That's why you can review. In the real TOEFL, of course, you cannot review it, right? 
Okay, so let's just continue next. Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor. Hi, Professor Mason. Do you have a minute? Yes, of course, Eric. I think there was something I wanted to talk to you about, too. Probably my late essay. Ah, that must have been it. I thought maybe I'd lost it. No, I'm sorry. Actually, it was my computer that lost it, the first draft of it. And, well, anyway, I finally put it in your mailbox yesterday. Oh, and I haven't checked the mailbox yet today. Well, I'm glad it's there. I'll read it this weekend. Well, sorry again. Say, I can send it to you by email, too, if you like. Great. I'll be interested to see how it all came out. Right. Now, um, I just overheard some graduate students talking. Something about a party for Dean Adams? A retirement party, yes. All students are invited. Wasn't there a notice on the anthropology department's bulletin board? Uh, I don't know, but I wanted to offer to help out with it. You know, whatever you need. Dean Adams, well, I took a few anthropology classes with her, and they were great, inspiring. And, well, I just wanted to pitch in. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you, Eric, but it'll be pretty low-key. Nothing flashy. That's not her style. So there's nothing? No, we'll have coffee and cookies. Maybe a cake, but actually a couple of the administrative assistants are working on that. You could ask them, but I think they've got it covered. Okay. Actually, oh, no, never mind. What is it? Well, it's nothing to do with the party, and I'm sure there are more exciting ways you could spend your time. But we do need some help with something. We're compiling a database of articles the anthropology faculty has published. There's not much glory in it, but we're looking for someone with some knowledge of anthropology who can enter the articles. I hesitate to mention it, but I don't suppose this is something you would... No, that sounds kind of cool. I'd like to see what they're writing about. Wonderful. And there are also some unpublished studies. D did you know Dean Adams did a lot of field research in Indonesia? Mo most of it hasn't been published yet. No, like what? Well, she's really versatile. She just spent several months studying social interactions in Indonesia, and she's been influential in ethnology. Oh, and she's also done work in South America that's closer to biology, especially with speciation. Uh, not to seem uninformed. Well, how species form. Y you know, how two distinct species form from one, like when populations of the same species are isolated from each other and then develop in two different directions and end up as two distinct species. Interesting. Yes. And while she was there in South America, she collected a lot of linguistic information and songs. Really fascinating. Well, I hate to see her leave. Don't worry. She'll still be around. She's got lots of projects that she's still in the middle of. Why does the man go to see the professor? Thirty-five seconds. Huh? You want to know the answer? Do you want to know the answer? Does everybody answer A, or there are others who want to answer another B? Jadi ada A ada D, gitu. Ya udah mau yang mana dong? Huh? D. Nah, because this is a practice test, yeah. Yeah, because this is a practice, you can, of course, show answer. You get the, the idea? Yeah, can. Coba deh. Is it correct? Oh, sorry, sorry. And I, I cannot go back. All right. Anyway, anyway. Yeah? Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. So that's how elephants use infrasound. Now let's talk about the other end of the acoustical spectrum, sound okay. that's too high for humans to hear, ultrasound. All right, all right. Listen to a conversation between a student and a registrar. Uh, hi, I'd like to drop off my graduation form. I, I understand. Listen to part of a lecture in an animal behavior class. Okay, well, last time we talked about passive habitat selection, like plants, for example. They don't make... A Listen to part of a lecture in an anthropology class. 
So we've been discussing 16th century Native American life. Okay. Yeah. So how many lectures? You have lectures. You have conversations, right? Okay. By default, how many conversations? I think it's about, you have it. And each conversation will be followed by five questions, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, lectures will be followed by six. Which one is which? I forgot. All right. Now, yeah. So you can practice here. You can practice here. This gives you a first hand experience on how to click and all that. But remember, basically, you have 35 seconds to answer each question. That is theoretic, uh, theoretically speaking, if you divide the time equally. But I know that some questions may be more difficult to answer than others. So it you may take a little longer for a few of the uh, questions, but then you may take a shorter time to answer others. Okay? You got that? So make sure you know where to find this, yeah? Make sure that you get a uh, pretty good pretty good experience on this and uh, I would like to open a question and answer session anyone would like to ask since this is the last session you may want to uh, what is that you may want to have me clarify on some some of the things that you're not sure of Any questions? Any questions, comments? It's not just about listening. It could be about anything from all the sections that we have been talking about. Go ahead. Uh, can we have a mic, please? Thank you. Hello, Bu. I'm Aulia. Hi, Aulia. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to ask for a bit regarding the listening sections of the librarian and the stu confused students. So in there, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure that I eliminate the enthusiastic one and uh, one of the other one, but I'm confused between two. It is the doubtful and the apologetic book uh, about the librarian tone. I understand okay. why the answer is finally doubtful because of the tone. Uh, she said, um, and then are you sure this is the one? But I cannot uh, get it over my head that it's not apologetic because she could not help this student, right? So I still feel it's a bit apologetic, but more strong on the doubtful one. How can I be sure on the answer during the test? Book? Is it uh, if uh, she said lots of, um, and, and there is the keywords, it, for sure is doubtful or is there any other okay. tricks to make me feel really sure on the correct answer thank yeah. you Bu. got it thank you Olia. yeah uh you're not going to be asked a question like that by the way i haven't seen i haven't seen a question asking how does the librarian feel you get the idea oh. that was just from my side to un to to make you understand that when you are listening when you're listening, it's not just the words that convey meaning, yeah, but also the intonation. Okay, Alia, right? I think you are a bit, con but she is definitely doubtful, definitely, because of the, uh, hmm? by region you mean? You, you get that. That's the question, but it was like, the rising intonation. And and that that kind of intonation shows like doubt. Or like, are you sure? Are you sure it's it's uh are you sure it's on the third floor at America? I thought it was like on the second floor. You're asking a question, but actually you wanted confirmation, right? Because you're not sure, because you're in doubt. You get that? And usually we have that intonation. Yeah, Olya, I think you got a bit, uh, what is that? Because you know that she's a librarian. You know the context that she's supposed to help. 
and you know that she could not. She could not, look in the end. Even in the end, she did not have the answer. She was still like, let's see this, let's see that. You get that. And maybe because you know that she is a surface person, yeah, then you feel that mm, she sounds apologetic. Get it all, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so sometimes our background information, what we know, will interfere with what we really listen to. So you need to be, you, you need to Separate. step away. Right. Yeah. You I need to like put yourself outside of the fishbowl. Okay? And just listen based on what you hear. And don't, uh, don't have that you are making inferences <laughs> you so based on your own knowledge. Yeah, and your experience, your understanding, your belief. You, you get what I mean, Aulia? I need to separate it. You with need to the separate it. Focus and content mm -mm. of the that sort the specific thing. Exactly. Okay. Because Thank whatever you. that you feel, or whatever that you're going to say, doubtful or whatever, I'm going to ask, what is the evidence? Remember, we're talking about academic stuff, yeah. It's all evidence, evidence, evidence. You got that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So Does that much. answer your question? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you, Alia. Any more questions, comments? Um, hello, everybody. My name is Janice. Uh, yes, Janice. I want to ask about a thing that I didn't quite understand. There is a a passage in reading and listening section, mm -hmm. there are a question, there are a say that try out or score not count. How can I determine the question that I not, there are not counted in the, for the score and the question that are, that are counted in the, in the section? It's from one passage, Dennis. So you have three, you, uh, by default, it should be three passages, right? Mm. And how many uh, conversations, how many lectures, right, for mm. the listening. So if you get four, it means like the fourth one will be the tryout. Mm. And the whole, right, the whole ten questions, because you have ten questions that follow in the reading after every passage. So that would be like all the ten questions, whatever that you answer, of course, will not be included. So, calm down, calm down. Now, kalau di listening, uh, I think it's still, it should be like the last one because you have how many lectures, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, that, that, that is usually the try out. Yeah, but mm -hmm. answer it anyway because they want to know. Okay? Yeah. Thank you for the... You're welcome, yes. you're welcome, Denise. Okay, thank you, Bu Afilia, for the introduction to Joval IBT. Actually, for listening, I I experienced today that most of the answers, the the correct answers for the listening part, always located on the nearly the end of the uh, conversation or the end of the uh, audio uh, audio text about about it. So. Is it always happen to be like that? So the pattern of the question, the correct answer, usually located at the end of the passage, or uh, sometimes it can be located at the beginning of the passage. Because uh, from today, what what I see is that the the beginning of the passage, and then some words uh, copy paste to the to the question and answer and it is only a distractor and the correct answer usually located on the end. Thank okay. you. Okay, so that's your observation, right? Sorry, sorry, your name is? Echo. I'm Echo. Echo. Yeah, so that is your observation, right? I don't see it, I, I did not see it like that. It is because, I'm, I'm going to be very careful in answering this, 
because I never analyze. Okay, I did not do uh, an analysis on, you know, uh, where's the, where's the, uh, the questions are created uh, from, you know, which part of the conversation. You get that? Because the claim is, your claim is, it seems that everything is like towards the end of the uh, conversation. So I'm not going to respond yes or no, definitively, because I, that's not my, obs I have not uh, observed on that. Yeah? Okay. Maybe, maybe that happened, it just happened because I am taking questions. Okay, the way that I took questions is I gave you different passages, right? Different, sorry, not different passages, different listening lectures, different listening uh, conversations, listening to conversations. And I specifically only took, you know, the ones that are related to the three categories, right? Okay. So maybe you, what you saw was like a glimpse of, oh, that's towards the end, towards the end. Maybe that's what happened. But actually, because, because I did it, I did it, organized it in a way that, you know, it was organized based on the category, basic comprehension, and then we have the, uh, what is that? Pragmatics understanding. And then we, the last one is, of course, the connecting ideas, right? And, you know, it was like this purpose, this whatever. Now, in, a, in the text, not in the text, in the format, okay, it doesn't, the question will not go into that order, yeah? All right. So you hear a lecture, and, and, you hear a lecture, you might not, kan tadi lecturesnya aja banyak. Remember? In the practice test. I think you spotted, yeah, Eko, you spotted five lectures. Like, five lectures. Okay. In one lecture, you may get the gist purpose question. And then they go to detail. And then number two will be the detail. Number three will be the uh, pragmatics. Number four will be the connecting ideas. You get the idea? Yeah. For another, uh, for another lecture, they may not be asking about this content. They may go straight to details. You understand? And then go straight to making inferences. Okay. Now, so what I'm saying is that because I took it, I organized it according to the categories so that you don't get confused. Itu loh. Kalau enggak, jadi loncat, loncat, loncat. You understand? Because not all the questions are represented in one Number one, not all the questions are represented in one, uh, in one test, yeah, in one, in one lecture or one conversation. Itu kan? Not all the questions. Kan cuma enam questionsnya aja, lima. And as you can see, there are like three categories, and then there are about three parts or two parts minimum per category that makes it more than. Five or six. You get the idea? Yeah? So, you might be listen. it might be just a coincidence. It would be better if you took this and see whether your observation, yeah, was, see whether that, uh, whatever that you face here is like, mm, a support evidence to your first observation. You got that echo? Do take this. Okay? And if you run out of run out of practice test, then you have the practice test which is yang gak enaknya kalau yang PDF they don't have the MP3. 
They only have the script. That's why you need to do this. Because this, you can listen. All right? Okay. Okay, go. Yeah. Okay. Any more? Oh, uh, yeah, Ibu. Uh, yes. My name is Fadil. And yes, Fadil. I want to ask you about, uh, I want to ask you a question about listening, especially in taking no strategy. Uh, first of all, I completely realize that I'm not able to multitask. Uh, it's easier for me to listen all the conversation without yeah. taking notes. So is so the question is, uh, is it able or is it possible for me to to listen all the conversation, all the lecture first, and the last minute I try to summarize it in the in the end of the part of the listening. It is. Yeah. Yes, it's possible. Oh, that's okay. your own preference. Oh. Okay. okay? But uh, Fadil, you just need to practice. Meaning that you need to listen to a lot of lectures, six-minute lecture, right? Uh, I think the average lecture that you got was about five to six minutes. So you need to listen to YouTube, whatever, National Geographic, whatever, uh, right? Podcast that takes about that time and listen your way, your way, which is, okay, so I'm just going to enjoy the listening, which is very which is very true. I recommend that strategy that Fadil, not not taking uh, not notes. taking notes all the time, yeah? yeah. Especially for the conversations. As I said, conversations are quite easy. So you listen, listen with enjoyment, right? Enjoy the listening. You will get the big idea. And you will probably find the detail. You you will be able, Fadil, because you don't you do not write anything at all, right? At the end, then you just jot down what you remember. I would suggest do it halfway. Don't write that. Don't get distracted by taking your notes, but make sure that when you hear something that's a detail, yeah. You got that? Like Mayans, ini, ini. Maybe you can just write Mayans. During the, when we talk about calendar. Maybe you can just write Stonehenge, Mayans, uh, Chinese calendar, lunar. You get the idea? Just the point. Later on, after you've heard everything, then you can come back and you can think, what did it say about, what did I hear about the Mayans? You got that, Fadil? So it's a half-half. Try a half-half. Oh, with okay. lectures, with lectures. Yeah. Uh, honestly, basically, I tr uh, train uh, when I listening a conversation. Uh, I made a maybe like a meta cognitive. Yeah. Is it? Yep. Uh, based, uh, it's run uh, in my mind mm -hmm. before I, before I taking notes. It's mm -hmm. easier for me to to do something like that uh, without taking notes. So yeah, maybe I want to try your. Suggestion: Try to practice it more in my home, and yeah, thank you very much, Ibu. But that's good, yeah. So I think everybody could learn from Fadil too, yeah. Your strategy is yours, gitu loh, right? It's good, Fadil, that you found the answer. Uh, I do ask my students for conversation to just listen to the whole, and not worry about details. Karena conversation is quite easy, right? You you ikutin aja ceritanya dia kemana. With lectures, though. It could be a bit tricky because then the questions might be something that you you miss, right? So just try try it like half half, if possible. All right, but your way is uh, is great. Good. Okay, okay. So I think I only have three more minutes left. Any more questions, please? Oh, great. We still we have lots of questions. Finally, <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, my name is Denny. Yes, Denny. And my question is uh, about the technical things in the listening sections. And the first one is: Can we replay the records while answering the questions? And the second one: uh, If we still have time after answering the last question, can we go back to the previous question to make sure our answer and uh, replay the records? Thank you. No replay. No replay. 
So that means that's it. Once. Only once. And uh, going back, it depends. Because you, you may be able to go back, but you go back to what? You know, because it's a, it's a, it's a listening, right? Okay. Uh, as long as when you go back to and then it's based on the listening, I think that uh, that's also not possible. Right, Danny? So train yourself based on one listening. It took practice. Yes, it, it doesn't mean that when you practice, when you practice, you practice, you hear something of the same, uh, the same listening task. Hear it more than once. That's how you practice. So that you get used to it. You know? So I recommend like the first time when you're practicing, listen to one listening uh, task. One lecture, gitu yang lima menit, enam menit. Listen to it twice. Three times if you have to. Got it? Then the next, then you, list, you pick up another listening, another lecture. Okay? Masih tiga kali. Sampai you get like the rhythm. Mungkin di lecture yang kelima, when you practice, then you try to listen only two times. So you go like three times. Then go shorter, two times. Until, oh, I can do it one time. You got that, Danny? Go step by step. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, thank you. You're most welcome. Question. Uh, hi, Bu. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> So I think I just realized that I'm facing difficulties when it comes to like listening on the proposed section. So uh, for example, that the librarian and the guy, right? I was thinking that this guy exactly looking for a book that related to uh, population, right? I know that um, this is like exactly that they're looking for a book based on his reference, right? But this guy kept like stressing and like uh, emphasized the point of like, I'm looking for a population related book. So I was thinking that, oh, this guy looking for a book that related to the population. So I know that the question is related to the purposes, not the detailed one, but how do I distinguish this part? Because like I, I found it very tricky for me to answer that. So my answer actually was A, and it turns out to D, and it was like, why? <laughs> I mean, okay. Is it like me lost the context or yeah, whatever? So yeah, that's probably the question. Thank I you. think you were distracted with the details. Yeah, but more so like that's this. why uh, Fadil, yeah. So that's why Fadil said sometimes don't when we make conclusions in the middle of a lecture of a conversation, that's that's when when we can get easily get misled by whom by ourselves. Right? That's why Fadil is like, I got to finish it until the end. Right? So, maybe I think, yeah, I think the problem is that maybe you're making conclusion in the middle. Because you're, you're, you're listening to him asking, is it, it's the librarian actually, right? By, by, by what? By country? By region? By what? Because she was asking a lot of questions to probe into what exactly, what exactly. What exact information does he need? Gitu kan? And then he was talking about, oh iya, by city, by, uh, and I need the statistic. About what statistic? Uh, statistics about the gender, about the age group, right? So in your mind, stuck statistic. Get it? Right? Listen to more. Okay, listen to more because he was just actually, it was all kinds of statistic that he needed. I think he also mentioned something else besides the statistic, right? So, um, how not to get trapped? Make sure that you listen holistically, not only just part, okay? And again, practice makes perfect, right? Thank you. I think uh, this is, the timing is already zero, 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 zero. So, I have to end this and I have to thank all of you, okay, for your time. All the best to all of you. Uh, hope you go to the States real soon, 2023. They're able to go to 2023, I think. Okay, all right. So I'm giving you back uh, to Andrea.
Okay, thank you so much everyone for participating in today's event and for joining our six episodes of TOEFL IBT preparation. And I would also like to thank Ms. Hafil for sharing your knowledge with us. Earlier in this event, we asked a trivia question which was true or false, most people take the TOEFL in order to apply to a specific school program. And the answer is true that the TOEFL test is required for any non-native English student who wants to go to a post-secondary school in the United States. Congratulations for Fear the PR from Instagram for answering the question correctly. And before I end today's event, I would like to invite you to follow us on our social media. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at AT America, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and newsletter for more updates from us. All right, with that, I think it is time to say goodbye. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Again, I am Andrea, and see you at the next AT America event. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.